Okay, next up, looking at the steering wheel here. So a couple things to point out. Let's start on the bottom left-hand side here. This is going to be for our cruise control. So we can tr turn cruise control, I should say, on or off. So as you can see, we've got that set button that shows up there. Once you get to your ideal speed, all you're going to do is press set. And then you're going to use the plus or minus buttons in order to increase or decrease your speed one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. You can cancel out cruise control here, or if you've had to brake, you can reset it to the speed that you were currently at by pressing the button here. Off to the right hand side of the steering wheel here, we've got a couple buttons. At the bottom here, if we've got an incoming phone call, we would press this button to answer, this button to hang up. We've got our mute button here, and then our voice control button here. So this button is going to give us the ability to navigate places, we can change the radio station, make phone calls, just by pressing the button here. Our rocker's at the top here, so we've got our volume rocker. So we can increase, decrease the volume from here. We can mute by pressing the center button here. We can switch between radio stations or if our phone's connected, we can switch between songs using the rockers here. Off to the left hand side, that's gonna give us the ability now to start adjusting this instrument cluster screen here. So let's move up a tiny little bit and let's adjust you up a little bit higher here. There you go. Okay. Now let's take a peek. So as we start to move up and down here, we can see tire pressure, speedometer, engine information, our current temperature, distance to empty, tons of options there. If we move back, we can look at our trip versus our fuel here. In order to reset our trip counter, all we're going to do is press and hold the OK button on the steering wheel. And that's going to reset us for, uh, for there. We've got our trip one and two, current fuel economy, fuel history, our compass, and then the auto start stop. So we can either adjust the auto start stop in a setting here, or we can turn it off using this button right here. Moving back here, if we do have tow, well, well, the vehicle does have towing, so we can look at the current towing status, trailer options. So we can select our trailer, we can change our settings, we can add a trailer in. So that's really, really useful. So one of the big reasons why it's useful, especially if you've got mirrors that have the blind spot indicator system. So this specific one doesn't. However, it does have heated mirrors here. So as you can see we're heated and then we've got this little tiny mirror here as well. So if you had one with the blind spot system instead, this little mirror would go away and then we would have a blind spot indicator letting us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the truck. Really, really cool. Adding in a trailer is very, very straightforward as well. Dropping down here. So if we're off-roading, we can see which wheel is doing which work. Power distribution, really, really cool feature there. And moving into our settings. So we've got our DTE calculation, rear parking aid, which is going to be that beeping that we get as we back up towards an obstacle. So if you have a preference, if you don't like that beeping, you can turn it off by pressing the OK button here. Moving into our pre-collision here, so pre-collision is essentially going to automatically brake for us here if the vehicle senses a collision. So we can turn the active braking off, but I do highly recommend keeping it on. Pre-collision assist, we can turn that on or off, and alert sensitivity is how sensitive it's going to be in order for the brakes to kick in. From here, looking at our advanced settings in our vehicle, we can change some things with the lighting. Auto high beam, I always recommend keeping that one on. Like sure, we can put like lift the stick in towards us or push it away from us to turn the high beams on if we want to. But with auto high beam enabled, it's automatically gonna turn the high beams on or off for us. It's going to adjust the brightness as necessary. So I do recommend keeping that one turned on. Auto lamp delay, so when the vehicle's locked, how long do the lamps stay on for? So 10, 20, or 120 seconds. Moving into our lock, so auto unlock and then remote unlock. So when you remote unlock, what happens? Is it the driver's door that gets unlocked or is it all doors? Moving back from here, whenever there's an oil change done, we're just gonna move to the screen here, press and hold okay. The dealership should do this for you whenever you get an oil change done. Moving back into our remote start. So we can turn the system off completely so that remote start doesn't work. But let's look at what happens when the remote start does work, when it turns on, I should say. So climate control, is it going to automatically let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Or is it going to be based off of your last settings? So the last time the vehicle was turned off, do we go based off of that? Matter of personal preference there. Seats, are the seats automatically going to turn on those heated seats as necessary? We can say on or off there. And then the duration of the remote start, does it stay on for 5, 10, or 15 minutes? 
Moving back into our wiper controls, so the vehicle we can turn on a courtesy wipe if we want to. While we're on the wipers here, so we've got our left stick here in order to be able to work the windshield wipers. In order to get the fluid here, there's a button just on the tip. We're just gonna press and hold that one here. As you can see there, in order to be able to turn that windshield wiper fluid on, and then rotating the knob here is going to let us select the intensity and how fast that windshield wiper goes. Moving back here, so that's going to be the basics in the advanced settings here. My key, so the my key is kind of neat here. So we've got two key fobs that are going to come with the vehicle. My key essentially allows you to set up unique things, specifically for a key. So let's say if you're lending your vehicle out, you can have it so that there's a maximum speed, let's say of 110 kilometers, so that people aren't excessively speeding in your vehicle. Really, really useful feature there. Moving back here, we've now got our display set up, so we can change the measurement units between liters per hundred, miles and gallons, kilometers per liter. Temperature again, Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Tire pressure, we've got some options there, as well as changing our language. So really, really straightforward there. That's gonna be the basics of the settings here. And then display mode, so again, it's all a matter of personal preference. I do recommend playing around there because you may find something that's a little bit nicer for you.